Tonight's lesson is lesson 12.9, problem solving with elapsed time. Our essential question is, how can you use the strategy, draw a diagram to solve elapsed time problems? Now we're gonna be working on page 237 in your Go Math book, so please write down this essential question at the top of your Go Math book page. Let's look at number one. It says Molly started her piano lesson at 3.45 p.m. The lesson lasted 20 minutes. What time did the piano lesson end? So we want to know if her lesson lasted 20 minutes, what time did the lesson end? So what we're going to do to figure this out is we're going to draw a diagram and we're going to use a timeline to figure out her end time of her piano lesson. So underneath number one in your Go Math book on page 237, I want you to draw a line just like mine here. That's our timeline, and we know that it started at 3.45 p.m., so we're going to make a start time of 3.45 p.m. Now, I know that it lasted 20 minutes, so I'm going to be adding to my start time. And what I'm going to do is, since I didn't go up a full hour, I the lesson only lasted 20 minutes, I'm going to count up in increments of 5 minutes. So each line is going to represent 5 minutes that has gone by. So make sure that you're drawing your timeline just like mine. So if I'm at 345 and I add 5 minutes, then I will be at 350 p.m. Now remember, I need to go to 20 minutes. So I'm at 350, I'm going to add another 5 minutes, and I will be at 345, or I'm sorry, 355 p.m. Now so far, I have gone 5 minutes. 10 minutes. Remember, we're trying to get to 20 minutes. Let's do another five minute jump. Plus five minutes, that will be four o'clock. If I'm at 3.55 and I go five minutes, I will be at four o'clock. So far I've gone five, 10, 15. Let's do one more jump. That's five minutes. Now I'll be at four o'clock from, if I add five minutes to that, I will be at 4.05. Now I've gone five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. That's how long her lesson lasted. So I know that my end time will be 4.05 p.m. That's what time her piano lesson ended. Okay, let's look at number two. It says Brendan spent 24 minutes playing a computer game. He stopped playing at 3.55 p.m. and went outside to ride his bike. What time did he start playing the computer game? So this one was different from our first one. They gave us what time he stopped. He stopped playing at 3.55. They want to know what time did he start. So they gave us an end time, and we want to know what the beginning time was, what the start time was. So we're going to subtract minutes instead of add them. So let's draw our timeline just like we did on number one. And this time we don't have the start time, but we have the end time. So we're going to put the end time at the end. And it said that he stopped playing at 3.55 p.m. And he played 24 minutes on his computer game. That's very important. We need to know that he spent 24 minutes playing on the game. So we're going to subtract 24 minutes from 355. Now, I think it would be easier for us to subtract 20 minutes from 355. So let's do that. Let's subtract a chunk of 20 minutes. So remember, we're wanting to find his start time. So we're subtracting 20 minutes from 355. Well, 55 minus 20 would be 35. So that would be 335 if I subtracted 20. Now I still have four more minutes because he played for 24 minutes. So I'm going to subtract another chunk of four minutes. Well, 35 minus 4 is 31, so it would be 3.31 p.m. That's what time he started playing his computer game. So we've had to find the start time this time, and when you have to find the start time, you have to subtract instead of add minutes. 
Okay, let's look at number three. It says Amy's karate class lasts one hour and 15 minutes, and it's over at 5 o'clock p.m. What time does Amy's karate class start? So they gave us the end time. They said it's over at 5 o'clock, and it lasts one hour and 15 minutes. They want to know the start time. So just like before, we're going to subtract from our end time. So let's draw our number line and let's put our end time. Our end time was 5 o'clock p.m. And we're going to subtract one hour and 15 minutes so that we can get our start time because that's what they're asking us for. So I can say that it's an hour, the class lasts an hour and 15 minutes. So already I see this one hour here. So I'm going to subtract a whole hour. I'm going to subtract a big chunk of an hour from five o'clock. So this is one hour that I'm taking away. And if I'm at five o'clock and I take away one hour, I will be at four o'clock p.m. So, so far, I've already taken away an hour. But then it says that it lasts an hour and 15 minutes. So now, from 4 o'clock, I'm going to take away increments of 5 minutes. So let's take away one group of 5 minutes from 4 o'clock. And if I'm at 4 o'clock and I go back 5 minutes, I will be at 3.55. Then I'm going to take away another group of 5 minutes. And if I'm at 3.55 and I take away 5 minutes, I will be at 3.50. And so far, I've gone 1 hour, 1 hour and 5 minutes, 1 hour and 10 minutes. Oh, I've got to go 1 hour and 15 minutes. So let me take away another group of 5 minutes. And if I'm at 3.50 and I take away 5 minutes, I will be at 3.45. So I've gone one hour, one hour and five minutes, one hour and 10 minutes, one hour and 15 minutes. So she started her karate class at 3.45 p.m. And that makes sense because I have five, 10, 15 minutes plus another hour and that's what time, or that's how long her class lasted, one hour and 15 minutes. So her start time was 3.45 p.m. Okay, guys, what I want you to do for me is next to number three, I want you to draw a happy face for me, but I want you to have the happy face have star eyes. So make sure that the happy face has star eyes and we can even make him have sunglasses, his star sunglasses. Okay, so make sure you have that next to number three, a happy face with star sunglasses. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, let's look at number four. Mr. Giermo left work at 7.15 a.m. 25 minutes later, he arrived at his work. What time did Mr. Giarmo arrive at his work? So they want to know what was the end time? What time did he arrive at his work? Now they gave us the start time. So that means that we're going to be adding minutes to our start time. So let's draw our number line here our timeline and we're going to put our start time at of 7 15 a.m that's what time he left for work that's what time he started his drive to work then it says that he got to work 25 minutes later so that's very important 25 minutes later so what we're going to do is we're going to jump increments of five minutes until we get to 25 minutes later and then we'll get our end time. So if we're at 7.15 a.m. and we add five minutes, so 7.15 plus five minutes, I would be at 7.20. So let's add another five minutes and I will be from 7.20, I will be at 7.25. And if I add another five minutes, I will be at 7.30. And if I add another five minutes, I will be at 7.35. Now let's check how many minutes we've gone. We've gone 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, remember he went 25 minutes. So let's add another five minutes. So plus five minutes, 
will be 7.40 a.m. So we've gone 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, and his end time was 7.40 a.m. That's what time he got to work. And this makes sense. I can check it by doing some addition. So I can say 7.15 plus... 25 minutes and since we're not passing the hour mark we can add the 25 minutes from the 715 we can do this so we can say that 5 plus 5 is 10 and 1 plus 1 is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 and then I can bring down my 7 so it works out his end time was 740 a.m. Let's look at number five. It says Mrs. Brown's flight left at 9.20 a.m. Her plane landed one hour and 23 minutes later. What time did her plane land? So I want you to try this on your own. And when you're ready to press play to go over the answer, go ahead and press play. Go ahead and try this on your own. Okay, let's go over our answer. Now here's the model that I drew. Here's my timeline. Now your timeline might look a little different from mine if you use different increments, if you added different minutes to yours. But as long as we get the same answer in the end, I think you'll be okay. So let's go over the timeline. So it said that her flight left at 9.20 a.m. So that's my start time. And it said that we she landed in one hour and 23 minutes later. What time did her plane land? So I was looking for the end time. So my start time was 9.20, which I have here. And it landed one hour and 23 minutes later. So that's really important, one hour and 23 minutes later. So I did a big jump for one hour. And when I jumped an hour, I got to 10.20. Then I just added increments of five minutes. So five minutes would be 1025, another five minutes, 1030. Remember, I'm trying to get to 23 minutes after my one hour jump. And then another five minutes would be 1035. Another five minutes would be 1040. Now, so far, I've gone one hour, one hour five, one hour 10, one hour 15, one hour 20. Now I need to go another three minutes. So another three minutes later would be I would have an end time of 10.43 a.m. That's what time her plane landed. So I hope that we got the same answers. And now let's go on to our homework problems. Okay, here are our homework questions for tonight. It says Bobby went snowboarding with his friends at 10.10 10 a.m. They snowboarded for one hour and 43 minutes and then stopped to eat lunch. What time did they stop for lunch? So it looks like they need the end time for this one. Number two says the Kane family drove for one hour and 15 minutes and arrived at their camping spot at 344. What time did the Kane family start driving? So it looks like that they need the start time for this one. Don't forget to draw your models and your timelines for these two problems. And then I want you to do the review questions three through six on page 238. When you get done, don't forget to assess yourself if you feel like you're a novice, apprentice, practitioner, and expert. I need this on your GoMath page at the top also. Here are your homework problems again. Good luck on them, and I will see you tomorrow in class. Bye!